fellow Nigerians, the first 18 months have been some of the most difficult periods in the history of Nigeria. They truly have been, with killings across the country, secessionist agitations in the south, and multiple school adoptions and terrorism in the north. But President Muhammadu Buhari says Nigeria is going on the offensive. We are taking the fight to our enemies from all angles, and we are winning. The Nigerian armed forces have recruited over 17,000 personnel across all ranks. Furthermore, I have also approved for the Nigerian police force to recruit 10,000 police officers annually over the next six years. The president also disclosed that 8,000 members of Boko Haram have surrendered and a federal lawmaker had been identified as a sponsor of his secessionist group. The recent arrest of Namdi Kanu and Sande Adeimo and the ongoing investigations being conducted have revealed certain high-profile financiers behind these individuals. We are vigorously pursuing these financiers, including one identified as a serving member of the National Assembly. The ban on Twitter will be lifted if the social media meets some demands. These are A, national security and cohesion, B, registration, physical presence and representation, C, fair taxation, D, dispute resolution, and E, local content. Five million Nigerians have been vaccinated against COVID-19, and Nigeria is working to ensure it produces its own vaccines, not just for COVID, but for future pandemics. Already, the Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority is raising a 200 million United States dollars fund for this initiative. President Buhari concluded the broadcast by saying no administration since 1999 has done what his has done in six years to put the country on the right track. For Plus TV Africa, Ngozika OHSE. We now have uh, joining us on uh, Plus News Now, a public affairs analyst, Ambrose Igboke. Thanks for joining us, Mr. Igboke. Mr. Igboke, can you hear us clearly? Yeah, I can hear you. Thanks for joining us. All right. I, I want us to start with your views on the president's speech. Um, some people have said it was uninspiring. Uh, do you agree with that? Um, I don't think, uh, no, the president has a slow way of talking. Um, so I don't know what is uninspiring about it, whether it is the slow pace of talking or the content. Uh, for me, it is content. Um, Nigeria should not be talking about, uh, our independent speech after 61 years should not be about the content of what the president has said. Uh, we should not be talking about um, successionist groups. We should not be talking about... Um, arrest of uh, people. Well, I mean, th those are routine, fundamental things that the nation does. Um, we have left where we were in the 70s. Nigeria was a power block globally. Nigeria in the 70s took stand against uh, the United Kingdom. Uh, where the United Kingdom was supporting apartheid in South Africa. Nigeria stood against it and formed alliance with the Soviet bloc and ensured that uh, the fourth appetite will stand still against uh, Western interests. Um, that is the kind of height we attained uh, 40 years ago, uh, 50 years ago, only for us to come back uh, when we are now celebrating 61 years and we are talking about mundane things. So it is a, it's, it's a sad commentary on our country that at 61, instead of us talking about going to the moon, um, instead of talking about uh, scientific breakthroughs, uh, just yesterday, I was reading an article of how China has created an artificial sun that is hotter than the natural sun, so that they can use it to uh, build their solar, uh, uh, you know, uh, renewable energy, so that it could not be scarce and have it all, all, all time round. These are where countries are heading to. Uh, countries are exploring uh, artificial intelligence and other scientific breakthroughs to ensure that things like 3D technology 
people are printing, want to print art and uh, other parts of the body, want to print liver by just 3D uh, uh, scientific method. These are where countries are looking at. And here we are talking about um, you know, things that are very inconsequential when it comes to global reckoning. So if it is not going to be, for any Nigerian who is passionate about the country, um, this kind of speeches is not what we want from our leaders. We want to know at independence, in the last, between the last time independence, how many jobs have been created, for example. We want to hear about how many investors have we, uh, have we, have we brought up. We want to hear how many FDIs, foreign direct investment we have got it. We want to hear the rise of our GDP. We want to hear that we have paid our debts. We want to hear that export potentials have increased and we are exporting more. We want to hear that uh, our local refineries are now working with full capacity and we are now exporting refined, uh, petroleum, uh, refined petroleum products. We want to hear that power supply is now uh, you know, uninterrupted. We want to hear that there, there is portable water uh, across the uh, rural and urban uh, centers in Nigeria. We want to hear that our roads have been fixed and that we are no more dying because oh. of uh, uh, oh, bad Ibuki. roads. Um, I, I guess, you know, the things that the president spoke about, you know, represent where we are as a country. And like you've said, it might be a little disappointing that after 61 years, these are the th things that we're still speaking about. Um, but the current administration has had six years to put us on a, on a different trajectory, um, you know, of course, as the country moves forward. Um, would you say that they have, you know, in somehow, some way, created, you know, the avenues with which Nigeria can grow and be better than it has been in the last, you know, 60 years? Well, uh, when you make uh, your uh, uh, arithmetic calculation, which is the simple one, 61 minus 60, uh, 6 years, you will find out that it's not, uh, it is very, very negligible. So uh, the administration has tried what it ought to do, uh, but we have known that the decay of the last uh, years before they came in, when it's surprised that I think we get 55 years. Yes. So the Nigerian problem has been going on for people. So um, the, the efforts they have made in the last six years have not been able to obtain uh, the things we have noticed in the last uh, 55 years. The problem of Nigeria is not about the regimes, whether it's six years or eight years. The problem of Nigeria is that there are no systematic advancements. Uh, it is all about, uh, it's a staccato arrangement. We have not been able to systematically grow. So this regime comes, does its own thing, another regime comes its own thing, and then that is why we are in a toxic of this situation. So what if we had, for example, the, the growth we made in the 70s, when oil boom was there, where we were having, where we were exchanging $2 to a Naira, if we have sustained that growth by now, then we will be talking about having an economy that is even bigger than that of the United States of America. So we are judging this with this in the next six years. By two years, they'll complete their tenure, they'll go. And then maybe there will be another policy somersault. But one thing I will give to this administration, which is very key, is that this administration had continued the projects of the past administration. And this is not normal in Nigeria, because most regimes, the road administrations where they come, tend to discontinue what these uh, predecessors have done, and then all create their own uh, project. That things like the rail line project has gone on. Things like the uh, some of the projects that were brought up by the past administration were continued, and that is where we can also, you know, uh, say that this administration has has done well. Uh, beyond that, a uh, lot of the debt, the administration is plunging out into more and more debt, and that kind of has to be looked into. Why are we borrowing to fund? Uh, well, they were saying we are going to fund capital projects, but we have said that we have borrowed money in this administration to pay salaries. Okay. We have shared uh, uh, repatriated uh, funds to, to pay uh, salaries. So Our these mistake. are not things we should borrow for. So we need to, the administration still have like one and a half years to go. I think they can still do better. All right. Um, you know, like you mentioned, you know, some of the things that were spoken about in the speech aren't things that we should be focusing on now, but. Unfortunately, that's where we are. So I want us to look at one of the things, just before we go, one of the things that he mentioned, and of course it is the secessionist agitators. Um, he made mention that, um, you know, Namdi Kano and Sunday Boho in particular 
um, very likely, you know, from what they found, have uh, people financing them, you know, a particular person in the National Assembly. So I want you to speak with regards to the secessionist agitators. Uh, was Nigeria always headed in this direction? And, you know, what would you expect from the president now that he said uh, that they know that, you know, a person in the National Assembly was sponsoring these agitators? Uh, one of the things I would say that we have to have what is the root cause of all these things. For example, why are the citizens of France, why are they not uh, agitating for secession? Why are the citizens of the United States not agitating for secession? Why are the citizens of Ghana not agitating for secession? Uh, when you have a, 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 a country that works well for you, you will not agitate for secession because nobody wants to leave something that is good. Therefore, the government should be looking at what are the root causes of these agitations? And it's only when we're able to approve the root causes that we'll be able to tackle the issue headlong. And then we also have to look at the both solutions in the international diplomacy and governance. We have what we call the stick and carrot method. So while we are supplying the stick, we also look at the carrots. How do we now be able to use a diplomatic solution as well as that? Just like what is happening in the Northeast. A lot of um, these uh, successionists, for example, the Boko Haram people, have been sent to overseas. They have been, uh, they have been integrated into uh, the, the society. Some of them were sent overseas to acquire skilled labor, and even in Nigeria, I think, and they have been integrated. So such political solutions should also be looked into. Because the, the country, when it's on fire, favors nobody. It doesn't favor the successionists. It doesn't favor the masses. It doesn't favor the government in any way. It is only a peaceful atmosphere that can engender economic growth for any country. Right. So the priority of the government should be to ensure that we we'll we'll have a peaceful atmosphere so that our economy can grow and the country can be at peace. Okay. I'm Rasik Boke. Um, always a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you for your time uh, this evening. And of course, uh, we wish you a very interesting weekend ahead. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.